Welcome back to Weather Underground. Researchers from three different universities are holed up in the mountains of Idaho this winter working on an innovative cloud seeding project called Snowy. Yeah. That is short for Seeded Natural and Orographic Wintertime Clouds the Idaho Experiment. Whew. That's why they call it snowy. That, it makes sense. So they're trying to increase the amount of snowfall in the region to generate more power from hydroelectric, dam, hydroelectric dams. The dams depend on melting snow to produce power throughout the year. All right, so let's get a little bit more now. One of the researchers on the project is Joshua Aikens. He is with the uh, University of Colorado joining us now. Uh, Joshua, let's talk a little bit more about this. Seems like a really innovative uh, project. How exactly does this work, seeding these clouds for snow? Yeah, so we have two ways. We have um, ground-based uh, seeding generators, which are actually, there's one right in front of me as well. And we also have aircraft um, where they fly tracks uh, up above us. And how do you determine if it actually worked? How do you know which clouds are actually producing snow, whether or not it was the ones you seeded? Um, so one of the ways is we can actually detect with radar. We have two mobile radars um, from the Center for Severe Weather Research. Uh, they're called the DAOs, the Doppler on Wheels. Uh, so sometimes we can actually see some of the seeding signatures directly from uh, one of the DAOs or also from a, uh, an aircraft-based radar as well. Uh, but we also have uh, models, or weather models, that we can run and we can back out uh, whether the seeding actually enhanced snowfall compared to what the natural precipitation would have done. And uh, it's one of your goals from this, the ability to, I don't want to say control weather, but the ability to maybe enhance the snowfall for watersheds and, and uh, you know, irrigation, snowpack, et cetera, for those areas? Right, so uh, snowpack is really, uh, really important for the water supply out in the Intermountain West of the United States. Um, it's also important for hydroelectric power production. So the more snow you can get in these mountains, the better the, the water supply in the summer and the better the power production we can get. You know, I have to ask this question. There's been decades of snow seeding experiments, and I know in Wyoming they just suspended because they've gotten a, tr uh, a tremendous amount of snow and, and rain into that area. So are there any questions from officials or residents about the research that's going on there? Uh, yeah, so we actually have a suspension criteria. And when I say we, um, it's the Idaho Power Company. That's who we're actually teamed up with. We do the science, they do the seeding, um, and they actually have a suspension criteria. So if there's a flooding concern or avalanche concerns, they actually don't seed. So anything uh, at, during those periods, it would just be natural snowfall. Uh, Josh, I want to ask you a question that, that I hope is not above your pay grade here. Is is the goal here maybe to, uh, and is, I want to know if it's cost effective or not, because if you're, one of your goals is to generate power, is it cheaper to see the clouds, get enough snow or rain to fall into that watershed to create the hydropower, or, or, or is that just kind of wishful thinking? Uh, well, so I, I only do the science. I leave that up to the Idaho Power Company. Um, but they've been doing it since 2003, so I'm assuming it's uh, you know, pretty, it, it works at least for, you know, financially for them. So. So let's get back to the science. How well has it been working? Has it been a success? And uh, do you think you have Mother Nature tamed? Well, so we may have actually captured some of the best images uh, with radar showing the direct effect of cloud seeding from aircraft. We actually picked up some radar returns that we think uh, could be uh, induced from the aircraft itself. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but a lot of the science is actually going to happen after the project. Um, but seeing the data come in is, is, is really cool. And do you find any downstream repercussions? I think a lot of people might be wondering, is this like a butterfly effect? Is it going to uh, have have issues or make changes down the line? Uh, with seeding or, or, or downwind of us? E either or. I mean, with seeding and then downwind. Once, once these clouds move out of this area, do we then see changes or effects elsewhere? Yeah, so the here in Idaho, most of our moisture supply comes from the Pacific. Whereas as soon as you get past to the Rockies, a lot of the moisture actually comes from the Gulf of Mexico. So we're trying to squeeze out, you know, as much moisture as we can in the drier regions of the Intermountain West. Uh, downwind, there, technically there could be less moisture if we're squeezing out a lot of moisture, but um, the mountains themselves already squeeze out the majority of the moisture. We're, what we're doing is, is only a tiny fraction. Joshua, how, how are you holding up this winter? It's not like the shining or anything up there, is it? No, not quite. I mean, you can see the... <laughs> growing in but uh <laughs> we're, we're doing pretty well we have a, a heated camper right down the way so uh we've been sleeping on some uh 
some nice, comfortable cots. So. All right. <laughs> sounds, sounds good, Joshua. Thanks so much for being with us.